I'm Marty Stauford. Have you ever walked in the woods and seen a hole high up in a tree? Chances are that even though a small mammal or another bird lives in it now, a woodpecker originally drilled it. The ancients believed these birds were gods that could bring forth rain by tapping their bills. Today, we know they can't perform miracles, and when we do think of woodpeckers, the cartoon character Woody immediately comes to mind. But age-old deity or modern comic, one thing is clear. These birds know how to use their heads. Their skulls are toughened to withstand the shock of constant forceful pounding as they whack away at wood in search of a meal or a home. With all their pecking and drumming, woodpeckers are most often heard rather than seen. And when we do see them, they're seldom more than a disappearing black and white streak. Their family also includes flickers and sapsuckers and totals between 23 and 45 species and subspecies, depending on who you talk to. All are adapted to a life on tree trunks and in branches. So come with me now and let's take a look at the fascinating lives of the woodpeckers, nature's hammerheads. A woodpecker's life is shaped and framed by wood. The downy, with its soft plumage and chisel-shaped bill, is typical. America's smallest member of the family. It's also the most widespread, found in open woodlands from Maine to California. Familiar and friendly, the downy seems almost tame as it flits through the branches, searching for insects. Downies often keep the same mate for several seasons. The male, with his scarlet fringe, and the plainer female take turns carrying food to the nest hole, where they raise two to five young each year. Both sexes are equally hard-headed, sharing the work of digging the nest and keeping it clean. Flying wood chips form a rough bed at the base of the nest, where the eggs are laid and the babies grow up, literally and quite comfortably, surrounded by wood. A tuft of hairs around its nostrils protects the downy from inhaling the sawdust it creates. Another remarkable feature of woodpeckers in general is the way their feet are adapted to an arboreal lifestyle. 
short legs with strong, sharp clawed toes, two pointing forward and two backward, provide a good grip. A woodpecker's tail is also superbly constructed to support its climbing way of life. Stiff tail feathers prop the bird as it hammers its way up or around a tree. This downy's neighbor and close cousin is a red-shafted flicker, whose favorite food is ants. It's often found feeding on the ground, though it too prefers to nest in tree holes. Like all woodpeckers, the flicker has an extremely long barbed tongue with which it laps up various bugs. Although flickers and downies don't really compete, the feisty little downy seems to enjoy dive bombing his larger cousins just for the fun of it. Most of the time, though, they get along fine. Our eastern forests are prime habitat for the largest woodpecker known to remain in this country, the pileated. This industrious bird leaves practically no stump unturned in its hunt for insects. Exceptionally strong neck muscles cushion the impact of powerful blows. This slow, rhythmic whacking often means that valuable timber is being methodically cleaned of destructive carpenter ants, the pileated's favorite food. Woodpeckers differ from songbirds, like this black and white warbler, mainly in the shape of their feet. But few woodpeckers are known for their song. Once common, the pileated is now seldom seen. So I consider myself lucky to find this pair actually mating. As with most woodpeckers, this male pileated shares parental duties with his mate. The young grow quickly, fed on a diet of pre-digested insects, regurgitated into their throats with no less force, it seems, than was used by the parents to dig them out of the tree. But the babies are not only uninjured, they're eager for more. Although the sexes look similar, the male pileated sports a red cheek patch and a larger red top knot. Midwestern areas, like this Indiana bog, are a favorite haunt of America's best known and perhaps best loved member of the family, the red-headed woodpecker. This bird is remarkable for the variety of its diet. Fruits and grains are consumed, as well as many kinds of insects. And not even a hickory nut is too tough to crack. The male and female are identical, and both sexes drum with their bills. 
to attract each other to nesting sites and to defend their surrounding treetop territories. Trees are all important to woodpeckers, a source of water as well as food and shelter. No other bird lives so intimately with and within wood or contributes so much to the welfare of our forests. Woodpeckers are preyed upon by hawks, owls, snakes, even rodents. And one study showed that more red-headed woodpeckers are killed by cars than are any other species of bird. Besides man, the greatest threat has been the introduction in the 1900s of the European starling. This intruder has significantly reduced woodpecker numbers by driving them from their nest holes and destroying their eggs and young. Within the continental United States, California boasts the highest mountain, the lowest desert, the oldest and tallest trees, and some of the best birding in the country. It hosts an amazing diversity of woodpecker life. This handsome fellow is a Lewis's woodpecker, first described by Lewis and Clark in 1806. Typically, the Lewis's feeds on insects, but it's also fond of the berries and currants which grow in the ponderosa pine forests that are its preferred feeding ground. The Lewis's has some interesting habits that are most un-woodpecker-like. For one thing, Instead of digging its own nest, it occupies the deserted cavities of other members of its tribe. And instead of boring deep into trees for grubs, it probes natural crevices in the surface of the bark. Even more unwoodpeckerly, it sails the air like a flycatcher grabbing many of its meals on the wing. But it proves itself a true woodpecker in caring for its young. A California neighbor of the Lewis's, the white-headed woodpecker is as strikingly marked as any member of its family. The male is distinguished by a red slash on the back of its white head. Though their favorite food is ponderosa pine seeds, white-headed woodpeckers also devour the eggs, larvae, and adults of many destructive insects and feed them to their young. Another fascinating California resident, found mainly along coastal regions, is the red-breasted sapsucker. Now, sapsuckers are woodpeckers whose name and food supply both come from the neatly chiseled pits they drill in trees. This Williamson sapsucker is a close relative of the red-breasted.
Though their feeding habits are similar, the Williamson's prefers to nest inland in the giant snags of ancient mountain trees. The female Williamson's look so unlike the male that they were once thought to be two separate species. But the young ones always know who mom is. For the red-breasted, as for many others of its kind, a strong and clever bill provides many bonuses. Its menu includes sap that collects in the wells that it drills, plus the ants that are drawn to the sticky fluid. It also eats the tender inner layer of exposed cambium bark. These sap wells also benefit others, such as this calliope hummingbird. Like most woodpeckers, sap suckers are not especially shy and will visit your backyard for the treat of a juicy apple. Woodpeckers of one kind or another are found all over the country, even in areas where wood is as hard to come by as rainwater. In the Saguaro Desert of Arizona, this female Gila woodpecker is gathering insects and nectar from acatillo blossoms, while her red-capped mate stores seeds in holes punched into the giant saguaro cactus. Literal-minded people might say that the Gila can't be a true woodpecker in a land where there's so little wood. But since it pecks at the closest available substitute, we might argue that it would peck wood if it could, and therefore is a true woodpecker at heart. Another desert dweller is the ladder-backed woodpecker, which sometimes drills nesting holes into the hollow stems of the giant agave or century plant. This is a risky location at best, liable to be blown down by a strong wind. Most woodpeckers, like this rarely seen black-backed woodpecker of our northern states, prefer more solid nesting sites to which they can return year after year. The black-backed has only three toes instead of four and is the only woodpecker of which neither sex has a single red feather. One of the most elegant and graceful looking members of the family is the golden-fronted woodpecker, a native of Texas. But looks aren't everything, and like many woodpeckers, the golden-fronted can be brash and noisy. Wooded hills and thickly timbered bottomlands from Oklahoma and Texas eastward are home to a close cousin of the golden fronted, the red-bellied woodpecker. This bird seems misnamed, for the red heads of both sexes are far more conspicuous than their pale bellies. Another southeastern native is the red cockaded woodpecker. This highly social little bird is on the endangered list due to its special nesting requirements, which are incompatible with timber interests here in Mississippi. The red cockaded 
bores through living sapwood into the rotten heartwood of aging pines. The exuded resin repels predators, especially tree-climbing snakes, which might otherwise raid the nest. We're back in California now, where there are more kinds of woodpeckers than any other state. Most, like this red-shafted flicker greeting the sun's first warmth, are common enough in other parts of the country or in neighboring states. But an astonishing number seem to thrive best in the rolling live oak foothills of the Sierras. Of this avian array, none is more intriguing in its behavior than the acorn woodpecker. Unlike most woodpeckers, it lives in groups or colonies of a dozen or so birds. And while a few other woodpeckers do store food, for the acorn woodpecker, hoarding is big business. It's a cooperative venture, with each member of the clan getting into the act. While this male hacks out a hole in the colony's storage tree, or granary, one of his fellow clansmen gathers an acorn to fill it. Flying with the undulating up and down motion typical of woodpeckers. What's not typical is the strong instinct for community. The entire colony works together, some preparing holes, some gathering the mast of acorns and nuts, and still others guarding the granary tree and its surrounding territory from intruders. Not content to stuff only the trunk, these acrobats hang upside down to pack the branches, too. In spring and summer, the birds live on insects, sap, and nectar. But working side by side through the fall, a colony stocks its granary tree with winter survival rations. Guarded and used by the colony over many generations, a single granary may contain as many as 50,000 storage holes. Group activities are usually harmonious, but not always. The stored acorns are carefully tended and turned to prevent rotting. In spring, what's left of the crop is used to feed the young, which are hatched in a communal nest and raised by the group as a whole. The fledglings are often awkward at first, but soon they are learning all the tricks of the woodpecker trade.
Some of these tricks can be destructive as far as man is concerned, such as when an overachieving acorn woodpecker bores right through a utility pole. But for the most part, all woodpeckers are highly beneficial, and their hammer-headed lifestyle helps other animals and birds as well. The kestrel, for instance, raises its young in deserted woodpecker holes, as do others. And so it's only right that all woodpeckers are protected by law. They're an essential part of any healthy woodland. More successfully than any other bird, they've adapted to life in the trees. They deserve every chance now to adapt to man and to have us adapt to them. Now that you know more about woodpeckers, you may want to try attracting some to your backyard. Your help in the way of food and shelter can go a long way in ensuring that these birds survive. For food, put out suet. You can use a contraption like this. This is sort of the designer model. Or all you really need is a wire basket. Get some suet from your butcher and stuff it in and hang it on a tree in your yard. Winter is when the birds will visit the most often. For summer, build a nest box. The size of the box itself and of the entrance hole is important because you need a larger box for a flicker, for example, and then a smaller box for a small woodpecker like a downy. In the past, people didn't always think so kindly of woodpeckers. Today, we realize that their habits are more helpful than harmful. So set out some suet or build a nest box. Then you too can enjoy the woodpeckers, nature's hammerheads. I'm Marty Stauffer. Until next time, enjoy our wild America.